day, everyone. I hope everyone is being positive and being ready. The purpose of the Safety Man podcast, safetyman.co, with Corey Jones here wants you to know is everything that I've learned over 27 years of law enforcement experience to keep you safe and to keep you ready. The goal of this podcast is to forearm everyone to be able to go to college, especially our young girls, our precious young daughters, our precious young sisters, to be able to have a safe, fun, enjoyable learning experience, okay? I want to arm you with some tactics, some considerations, and some best practices so you can use these things. We're going to have to practice them at first, okay? First couple of weeks, I want you to actually practice this with your group. Get a group of like-minded individuals that are going to look out for each other and practice these things. They'll become second nature. I know at first you're going to find them annoying. You're going to say, Corey, this is crazy. I don't feel like looking for exits. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like doing that. Trust me. Just practice them. We did it as law enforcement officers. We practice all these things like drawing our weapons or walking up on the driver's side of a police car or doing certain things. But after a while, it became second nature and it made our jobs easier. And when things are second nature, it opens up your brain to make better decisions on something else, some anomaly, something that you weren't expecting, so you can then click back on a plan. The goal of this podcast is not to scare you. I don't want you thinking that when you go to college that you go in some place where you're going to be assaulted, where you're going to be a victim, okay? It's not really like that. I just wanna give you the best information, the best tools, the best tactics, so that if you have to use violence, that you can use it effectively, and that if you have to use avoidance, de-escalation, deterrence, or running away or escape, that we're primed and ready to do that so you can read the signs. You've been around for a long time, 16, 17, 18 years old. You've developed spidey senses, that sixth sense that can tell you when something's going sideways, okay? We want you to be the productive, upstanding citizen that your parents want you, and I know that you can be, okay? Number one is I don't want you walking around texting, especially at night with your phone in your hand. If you are going to do it and somebody does approach you, what I want you to do is take that phone and immediately go from texting to put it up to your ear and pretend you're having a conversation, practice Say, Hey, hey, how's it going, Bill? Yeah, how's football practice? Okay, yeah, I'm right around the corner. I should be like one minute from you. Okay, exactly where we said we were going to meet. So some scumbag, some ne'er-do-well, some bad guy who's thinking about assaulting you or following you or stalking you is going to think that a football player named Bill is right around the corner. That may make him or her less likely to try to interact with you in a negative fashion. Okay, again, just remember, one of these tactics isn't in and of itself the give all to end all. We want to use a group of these tactics and techniques to try to make ourselves an unattractive target, okay? We want to use the ruse to create a diversion and then potentially kidnap, drug, or sexually assault somebody. So people use a ruse as a distraction, okay? They may want to alert you to, hey, can you help me with a puppy and get in this van? You know, uh, the there are serial killers who were a cast on his arm and asked people to help him put his laundry into his van. And then he would push them in, drug them, take them away, sexually assault them, and then murder them. Okay. We don't help people. Okay. If somebody needs help, you get on your cell phone, you call security from a safe location, say, Hey, there's somebody in parking lot 821 who needs help. He's, uh, you know, got a, a cast on his arm and do that. There are actually women that are being employed by men to help lure women to, to help them out because they think that young girls are going to trust a female over a creepy male, which is probably likely. But after listening to this, you're not going to do that. OK, we want to know our exact location and our exact address, the exact floor we're on the exact room number we are on, the exact way to get in, the way to get out, the addresses, the elevators, the stairwells, okay? We want to know all of that information so we can direct first responders if we have to call or text 911 to get help for a traumatic medical emergency, a fire, or some sort of crime in progress, okay? 
Get to know your security guards or the people at the front desk by the first their first name, okay? If your mom and dad break, bakes you cookies or Rice Krispie treats, give them some of them, okay? Go to Wawa, go to Starbucks. I know we're on limited budgets, but buy them a $5 gift card to Starbucks or Wawa or Dunkin' Donuts or someplace that's close, Chick-fil-A, someplace that's close on campus, even if it's in the campus cafe, so they can get a cup of coffee, okay? And introduce yourself. Hey, my name's Corey Jones. It's my first year here. You know, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little scared. I'd appreciate if you looked out for me. And as a way to say thank you, I just wanted to give you this $5 gift card for coffee so you can stay up awake at night you know, and so forth. Get them to know your name. That by creates buy-in. That makes that person going to give you a little bit of extra look out and to say, hey, you know, there's a creepy guy over there or whatever. Or if you see a, creep, a creepy guy, you can say, hey, security guard, Corey, this guy over here has been following me. Can you uh, hook me up and get me to my room? Okay. Right. We want to know all the emergency exits from where our dorm is, where our classrooms are, where we spend our time, where we eat our lunch, where our study hall, our library, all those places that we spend time, we wanna know where all the security entrances are on that. The emergency entrances and exits are on that. If they don't tell you, look for the signs. Usually when there's an emergency and the power goes out, those signs light up with a little arrow that tells you how to get out but you want to know them. In your actual dorm room, literally, if there's a fire, you want to be able to get down on the ground and count how many doors you would have to find before you got that stairwell. We all know we don't use escalators and elevators in a fire, right? Because they get stuck. We want to use stairwells. Stairwells have what's called positive pressure. So the uh, smoke is pushed out of the stairwell and the Fresh air is stayed in the stairwell as long as those doors are closed. So that's called positive pressure stairwell. And you listen, AI is going off, okay? Alexa, stop, right? So you can use your Alexa to help you. If you're with somebody on a first date and you want to be able to end it, just tell your AI in about 10 minutes to tell you that you have to go meet your friend somewhere. And it's an easy way to get out of that. So that AI can come in handy to help you get out of there, okay? When you're making friends on campus, you have your friends that have similar interests, you have your teammates, you have your people in your classroom, but try to make friends that have similar interests in you do and similar values to what you do, okay? If you're not a partier, if you're not a drinker, if you're not into drugs, if you're not into going out and having one night stands on all those different things, make friends with people who also share those same values and morals. I'm not making judgments on what they are. I'm just letting you know it's much easier to contain and maintain your morals and values and ethics if you hang around people who share that. I'm sure your parents will thank me for saying this, okay? So make sure you try to make friends with the same morals, values, and ethics that you have. OK, those people are going to look out for you. If you have happened to had too much to drink, they're going to be the ones that are going to say, hey, Corey, no, maybe you shouldn't leave with that person. Maybe we will all leave together. Right. So you want to do that. OK, when you go out, go out in groups, even if it's just two or three people, try to go out in groups. OK, never let anyone travel alone. Never let anyone leave alone with a young man. OK, if this young man is worth your time, he will understand that he has to put the work in and he met you. He got your number that night. You guys can talk. You can learn about each other. You can Google him. You can look at him on all the social media apps and whatever and find out what he's really about. Maybe you can find some usual friends and find out if he's a player or if he's a good guy or if he's a creep. Right. Nobody leaves alone from a club, from a bar, from a party by themselves with another young man, okay? It's just dangerous, okay? So make that person wait just one or two days. You're gonna like it better. You're gonna know a little bit more about them and you're gonna be able to make better choices, okay? Never let anyone travel alone. If you do feel nervous and you do have to leave by yourself because your group is there, contact the bouncer, contact the security, contact one of the bartenders and say, hey, I gotta get out of here this person's acting creepy, this person's stalking me, this person won't leave me alone, and they will do their best to get you to safety on purpose, whether it be 
calling you an Uber or a Lyft or a ride share or actually walking you someplace, or you can contact campus security to get a ride to your dorm, okay? A lot of campuses have phones that have blue lights on them in the parking lot. So if you're stuck in the parking lot and you feel nervous, you can pick up that phone. It goes directly to campus security or campus police, and it knows exactly where that phone is, and they will dispatch a campus security officer or a campus police officer to you. Stay on the phone with that dispatcher. Give them all the pertinent information of the color of the car, the color of the person, the make, the model. If you can get the tag number, where it is, where it's going, where it's headed, what you're wearing, and follow their instructions about what they're going to give you for that. Okay. Another thing I always like to tell people is trust your sixth sense. Okay. You've had 17, 18 years to build up this sixth sense. You know when something's shady. You know when something's sideways. Trust that. Trust that, okay? That never steers you wrong. If you are wrong, so what? You can apologize the next day. You know what? I had a bad impression. I was having a bad day. I'm really sorry I didn't give you the time of day. My name's Corey. Let's try this over again. How you doing? Sorry about that. But you can understand I'm a single young girl on a campus. I you know, was brought up not to just trust everybody that comes up to tell me. All right? People will appreciate that, right? Before you leave the college, Take a self-defense class or two, okay? You know, personally, I'm affiliated with a Krav Maga school right in Cherry Hill. The second Wednesday evening of every month, a good friend of mine, Susan Darty, her website is, write this down, haven, H-A-V-E-N, dash defense.com, haven dash defense.com. She's amazing. She teaches this exactly. She has a daughter who just graduated from college. And she teaches uh, female marathon runners how to be safe when they're doing marathons. She takes this very personally about keeping young girls safe in college. She can do group sessions. She can come to your house and do private sessions. The good thing about having a female instructor teaching female uh, self-defense is that you don't have to have some sweaty, strange dude laying on top of you trying to get him off of you during this training session. So it's a lot safer, okay? Second Wednesday of every month is called Israeli Krav Maga, I-S-R-A-E-L-I -E Krav Maga. It's in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. It's only 25 bucks. It's an hour and 45 minutes. It doesn't matter if you haven't trained there at all. You train at your own speed, okay? They pick up from where they left off before, but if you didn't catch it, you're gonna learn from the first day, okay? I trust this woman implicitly. I recommended her to probably 30, 40 clients who have daughters in this similar situation, and I've got nothing but positive reviews, okay? If you do plan on carrying a self-defense weapon such as pepper spray, pray, please, pepper spray, let's try that in English, pepper spray, please learn how to do it and use it, and please always have it in your hand when you're walking, especially at night. You can have your keys attached to it, but have it in your hand. Now, I always tell my clients to test it a little bit. I recommend pepper gel or pepper foam. Pepper spray comes out like Axe body spray. And every girl in here listening to this knows that if you use Axe body spray, in about 10 seconds, the whole room smells like Axe body spray. The same thing with pepper spray. If you use pepper spray, the whole area is going to smell like pepper spray. And unfortunately, it's going to negatively impact you as the potential victim when you use it. Pepper gel and pepper foam comes out like silly string. Okay, it's very directed. There's much less overspray. There's much less cross-contamination. It's really effective. It's easier to aim because you can see it hit the bad guy's eyes. So you want to put it right in his eyes. And if he opens his mouth, if you can get it all the way back down there and hit that little boxing, that little punching bag that in the back of the throat, that person's not going to be happy. You're going to take them off their plan. And that's what all these goals are, is to build us time to make an escape, to get help, right, or to attack this person so they don't attack us. So if you're going to carry that, make sure you use that and expose yourself to it in a controlled situation outside, just a little bit, spray some in a styrofoam cup and just wave it in front of your face so you, and have somebody there with you just so you can get an idea. Because part of the value of pepper spray 
and pepper foam and pepper gel is the shock value because the body thinks it's not going to be able to see and it's not going to be able to breathe again. All right. We kind of talked about this a little bit that nobody leaves alone with a person. That person is cool. They'll understand that you're not going home with them on the first night. Right. Get their number. Talk to them. Get to know them just like you would on the dating apps. Right. Get to know them. Find out they're a good person. Ask them about what the major, where they grew up. Talk about their parents. You know, get to know them. I'm not giving dating advice. I'm giving safety advice. Okay. I don't want you to become a statistic. I don't want you to have to go through the rest of your life reliving some traumatic experience. Okay. Chances are that's not going to happen. But my goal is to make sure that that doesn't happen. Right. The goal of this podcast isn't to actually teach you self-defense, but there are a few things I think you should know going in to defend yourself that you must create debilitating injury. If this does move to an assault where somebody has put their hands on you and they're trying to take you to a secondary location, they're not taking you to a secondary location for good reason. That means they're going to assault you and possibly kill you. And when I say assault, That means physical assault and sexual assault. So they are going to take you to a secondary location so they can have privacy, so they can do what they want. You have to uh, affect debilitating injury. And that means digging your thumb into their eyes up to about the third knuckle, okay? Those those fingernails that you spent that money on, digging those thumbs into their eyes. Because when you dig those thumbs into their eyes, They can no longer hold you down with their hands because they have to come up and protect their eyes, right? So we're going to attack the eyes, the throat, the groin, okay? And then if we get that person down, we have to make up that they can't get back on their feet again and create another threat because they're going to be upset. So then I tell you to stomp the Achilles, stomp the groin, stomp the neck, okay? This person attacked you, okay? We have to make them immobilized so they can no longer attack us and we can get away, okay? If you are feeling that you're being attacked, you want to scream at the top of your lungs, help, fire, 911, and your location. Help, fire, 911, and your location, okay? Corey, why am I yelling fire? Well, if a fire truck shows up with six dudes and axes and big wrenches, that college dude that was trying to do something to you, he doesn't stand a chance. As soon as he hears those sirens, hopefully he's going to run away. Okay. So firefighters like police officers, we don't like bad guys assaulting the young females in our lives. Right. So we want to yell fire, help 911. 911 lets people know who to call for assistance. So we want to yell help fire 911. And then we can get those first responders to help us. Okay. And getting to the end, there's little safety uh, devices that we can use like personal alarms and GPS alarms. So if you activate a button on your smartphone or on another device, it either makes a loud shrilling sound or it sends an alarm with a GPS location to a trusted individual who can then call local law enforcement, you need to prepare them for this. They can call local call local law enforcement and direct them to your location and say that Corey Jones pressed his alarm button. He's located at the intersection of 123 Main Street and Fifth Avenue, and they can send people to help you. There's ability on the ones that are built into the phone where you can deactivate it with a four digit or five digit code that only you know. If the bad guys try to make you deactivate it and you put in the wrong code, it actually speeds up the response. So you can do that. All right. That's all I have for this podcast today. Just make sure that we listen to this. We trust our spidey senses. We take some sort of self-defense class or two before we go to school. A lot of schools will have the ability to take self-defense classes Make friends with your security officers, make friends with the police officers, give them gift cards, give them donuts, give them coffee, do whatever you can to get on a first name basis, get them to look out for you, right? Never leave alone, never leave alone, all right? Go out alone, come home alone, stick up for your friends, 
We've all had too much to drink. We've all made those poor choices. We need to have a designated non-drinker that's going to help us continue to make those good choices. Okay. Finally, there is a uh, something that's called like it's almost called like a condom that you put over top of your drink so nobody can slip something in it. So you while you don't want to leave your drink unattended, you can put this on top of it to make it harder for somebody to slip something in your drink. If you lose track of your drink, get another one. If somebody just hands you a drink, don't drink it. If you walk away, take your drink with you. OK, don't accept drinks from strangers. Don't accept drinks from people you don't know. All right. Control your alcohol and don't get too drunk. Know the signs of what happens if you're being roofied. I have been roofied before. The signs just come on like that. You start to feel woozy. Immediately go to a bouncer, a security officer, a trusted friend, or an employee of the bar and say, I don't feel good. I need help. You can either call an ambulance or call a law enforcement officer to stay with you until you can get better. Okay. Additionally, no one leaves alone. They make something called a scrunchie or a uh, shower cap. That's that condom looking thing I told you that you can put right over your drink. You can wear it like a scrunchie. You can take it off. It goes right over top of your drink and it makes it a little bit more difficult for somebody to lift that up and slip you some sort of date rape drug, whether it be rohypnol or gamma hydroxybutyrate to uh, take advantage of you. If you're going to carry a weapon, learn how to use the weapon, learn the effects of the weapon, learn the laws of the places you're going with the weapons that you're going to have. Before you go to college or while you're at college, take a self-defense class, okay? Right in Cherry Hill, there's Israeli Krav Maga, Suzanne Darty, haven-defense.com, haven-defense.com. Trust your spidey senses. If it seems bad, if it looks bad, if it feels bad, it is bad. Get out, get away, make noise, get help, okay? When you go out, go out in groups. No one leaves alone. No one leaves alone. That guy is not that important where you're going to abandon your friends and go be in an alone place with this man you met 10 minutes ago, three drinks in, okay? If he's that good, he'll be that good tomorrow, okay? Protect yourself, okay? Make friends with people who have similar values to you, similar morals, similar ethics. So they're going to help steer you in the right direction when you're involved in these situations. And finally, know your location, know your address, know exactly where you are, know how to direct first responders there and know how to get out of where you are safely. Know at least two exits. Everybody knows how they got in. But when you get in, just do that quick scan and find out how else you can get out of this situation should there be a fire, a traumatic medical emergency, a riot, a large fight, an active shooter or shots fired, or you just have to get out because some dude or dudes are stalking you and you want to slip out. But I always recommend you tell somebody to help uh, escort you off of these premises. Okay. My name is Corey Jones, safetyman.co. My podcast is Safety Man Consulting. Please like, smash, push, jump on, punch, whatever you got to do, that subscribe button so I can keep getting you this tactics and techniques to keep you safe. Be safe and be ready.